والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما درج شريف برو الله ما صلي على محمد النبي لمي ولا يسلم تسليما كثيرا الله ما صلي على محمد Alhamdulillah by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's fadl and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy we have um, an opportunity here actually to sit in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, the Lord of the worlds the purpose of our being the creator of the best of creation, Sayyidina Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and hasusan upon his beloved servants, the companions, their followers and their followers and uh, today we have an all of, at all times the friends of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala who we look to in times of difficulty, in hardship where Sometimes we may seem like life is getting hard or sometimes the societal pressure is too much for us to bear and then we look to the lights of this Ummah, the guides of this Ummah and the true friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not sometimes we have an idealistic point of view as to how we see a guide, a murshid, a friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have created our own ideology, our own understanding. Whereas really, it is not too much to bear. It is very easy to truly see the friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, if I was to go around and ask each and every one of you, okay, what do you see when I ask you, what is the perfect Muslim? What is it? If I ask you in your mind, a person might imagine a man in the, in the sunnah libas, he might have a beard, he might have a, a slick black zulfa, he might have a, a beautifully tapped turban, he might have jubbas, he might smell of atar, itar, and he might be excessive in his worship. Like That's the most common understanding is that people give. We think that this is the perfect, the idealistic Muslim that we should follow. Yes, all of this is good. For a person to follow the sunnah is very good. But we have to understand is that sometimes we actually create these personalities in our mind and they don't really actually exist. Because sometimes is that when what you need to look for in a guide or someone who is yet to or someone you are yet to find in order to actually put your life on track. It's like in the time, what I'm going to do is just very quickly just cover this point. At the time of the Sahaba, their teacher was the Prophet ﷺ. They had someone to look to for guidance, for advice, for nasiha. And so the Prophet ﷺ gave the Sahaba tarbiyah. And we were recently discussing is that for 12 years before Salah, what was the Prophet ﷺ doing with the Sahaba? What was the Prophet doing with the Sahaba? What the Prophet was doing was giving them tarbiyah and teaching them how to, instilling them with the right attitude, the right mentality for when the time comes that Salah is revealed, when that time will come. So then when the Prophet went on the night journey and we were granted the gift of Salah, the Sahaba were ready. They were ready to face that trial. Even if you actually look through the story, you'll see that when the Prophet ﷺ went to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us 50 salah. It wasn't only five. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us 50. And then when the Prophet ﷺ was returning, it was Musa alayhi salam who in a way interceded for us. And he said, 50 is very good, but 
your ummah cannot bear this for 50. It is too much for them. So go back and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again. And this repeated and repeated and repeated over and over again until, until uh, the Prophet ﷺ went to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reduced the salah to five. And how we know it today, Fajr, Zohar, Asr, Maghrib and Isha. That's how we know it as the five prayers today. And there, even after that, Musa alayhi salam actually said that this will still be too much for your ummah. And as it is proved today, is that how, how difficulty, how much of a burden we have made this prayer, is that it will truly reflect in your daily lives. Is that your salah is supposed to be your pillar in the deen. It is supposed to be something which is grounding you in the religion. What have we made it is that now, Sometimes we think, oh, why is such calamity uh, afflicting us? Why is bad health uh, afflicting us? Why is, why is my suffering? Why am I financially suffering? Why am I suffering in all wakes of life? Why is the ummah in calamity around the world? Is that all we have to look to is the very basic thing. The very thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala established as obligatory. The prayer. The five daily prayers. The Fajr, the Zohar, the Asr, Maghrib and Isha. How have you established these? Where, where are these prayers? Are, they, are you praying them? Or are you not praying them? Many people now, we take this matter so lightly. It's because sometimes we think that, oh, I'll pray when I need something. Okay, a person might need money. Right, okay, now, now I'll get up for Fajr. I got told, someone told me to pray for Fajr and you get risk. So I, now I'll pray for that purpose. Someone told me if you pray, Zohar, Noor comes in your face. Or for example, you hear these things. Oh, if you uh, pray Asr, you will never be afflicted with bad health. You know, you hear these things, mashallah, they are good. But what I'm trying to say is that our purpose for praying should not be those things. Because if you don't get those things, what's going to happen? You tell me. Brother Majid, what happens if we don't get these things? We we'll leave the Salah, get disheartened. We leave it. So what you should do is actually going back. I think Brother Majid even actually went to the Haji Sahib, went through this, is that we should every single gathering, wherever you are, you come into the masjid, recite your dua for entering the masjid, you go to sleep, you wake up, you pray, you do eat, everything should be done for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's pleasure. Like when a person eats, uh, recite the dua for eating, I say, Ya Allah, I am eating so I have energy to worship you, this is the sunnah. So not only you are doing the dua, that I have energy to worship you because you are training this mind. This mind and body, you slowly, slowly start to train it. Uh, I need to slowly ready myself for the prayer. This is, like my, this is like my training. This is like the time when I am going to give this certain, this, this 5 or 10, 15 minutes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, now if I ask you, how long does it protect to pray Zohar? How long roughly? So it's 12 rakat in Zohar, how long roughly? Any rough guesses? This was like a normal pace prayer, not too fast, not too slow, how, how quick, roughly? 10 to 15 minutes, if a person prays the full. And that is why, look, even it can get even easier for you. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put nawafil in there, optional prayers. But what it is, is that it's actually leading me onto the topic today about ilm, about knowledge. Is that, look, if you knew that, okay, I'm tired now, I don't have time, you can you can miss that optional prayer. Not that it's recommended or something, one person should pray if they have an opportunity to do so. But if you can't or, you, or you're already lazy in your salah, a person should actually know each prayer, what is its uh, sharri ruling, what is its ruling in the deen? Where is it? Now I actually asked a brother for a whiteboard, but if I can have a pen and paper, just very quickly inshallah, I just want to give, you, give, a, give an example about something. But what I'm going to say, look, 15 minutes for the prayer in Zohar. 5 minutes for, 5, 6 minutes for Fajr. It's not much, is it? It's not much. Who's, no one's asking you to right, give a light. Yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accommodate for these things. Inshallah, when the, when the pen and paper comes, then I'll try to give you a real physical example of how your deeds stack up. So, this actually leads me on to the knowledge. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the source of enabling grace. So Allah enables fadl upon you. You can't enable fadl upon you. So fadl means grace. 
So grace, just to simplify, when you hear this is the fadl of Allah, it means grace. So when you hear this, is that Allah enables the fadl. So for example, all your rizq, all your, all your life, all the time, all the days you spend on this earth, Allah's fadl. Everything you have is through Allah's fadl. And Imam Ghazali is uh, 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 addressing the seeker. So the seeker of salvation and the seeker of worshipful service. Inshallah, what I'm going to do is I'll ask uh, Brother Awas to uh, present this round once I'm done. What I'm going to do is I want each and every person to give me a different deed. So you tell me a different good deed. So Brother uh, Haji Sahib, we'll start with you. Want any good deed in the world? Charity. Okay, we'll just put a zero there. Right, brother. Any good deed, you tell me. Looking after your parents. We'll put another zero there. These are estimates, by the way. This is not what you're going to get. You know, you don't get zero. So, uh, brother, uh, what's your name? Rashid. Okay, any good deed. You're doing tasbih, so we'll say tasbih. Okay. Uh, brother Adam, if you want to have a go. <laughs> doing media. Mashallah, khidma. Doing khidma. Uh, brother, you don't have a go. Any good deed? Fasting, mashallah. Okay. Granddad, if you want to have a go. Two granddads, inshallah. <laughs> Looking after neighbors. Salah, mashallah. Uncle? Ji? Zikr, mashallah. Okay, now what I've got here is that many zeros. What is the value of those zeros? Zero. It doesn't matter how many zeros you have. What is the value? Zero. Now, if I tell you, yeah, now we'll go back. Now, if I ask you, what is Aqidah? What is your belief system? Are we, are we do, like, this is a common question, yeah? We don't, people tend not to talk about it often, but what I'm trying to, I'll simplify it, is that if I say to you, what's your Aqidah? He'll say, oh, belief in Allah, we might say seven articles of faith, we might say, said to might have a little bit of extra knowledge on certain fields, but, to have the correct aqidah of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, that's the one. Now, what's the value of that? I'm bearing it, I don't know if you can see it, but I've written it, it's quite, quite small. But there you can go, I'll just show everyone, inshallah. So, that's the value, it's billions. Now, I'll give you another one. Let's, do, let's go around one more time. Brothers, give me one sin. Lying. Okay, we'll put a one there. Adultery. Okay, we'll, we, as you, you get the concept basically, what I'm trying to say is Now another very important, con now that's the Aqidah Yeah, when a person travels a path, you have to have something which is outlined Now when a person does Tawbah These are gone These are gone So you can imagine Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy When it comes to how we should, how we should operate as a person Imagine now if everything you're doing slowly but surely, you're making the correct intentions, you're praying your salah, all them good deeds, mashallah, you mentioned, many, many, many more, and th those are very important ones as well, acting upon them. Because it's no good for me now to know it, because you do know. You've just said to me all these different good deeds, mashallah, I've not said anything, you guys have told me. You've all said that all these good deeds, now, what is it? And what does Imam Ghazali say about this? Is that may Allah enable you to gain knowledge for the pivot, the qutb on which everything turns. You must understand that knowledge and ibadah, so ilm and worship are two essentials. So now you put the two together, zahiri, batini, inner and outer aspects. Because knowledge is something inside. Inshallah, in future we'll try to cover this. This is one of the seven hurdles that leads a person away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So imagine now, you've told me, now all it is is putting it into action. You guys have all said, uh, granddads, uncles, elders, and I'm pretty sure the sisters have, uh, you know, they know their deeds and they know what they're doing. But now all you have to do is put this into place. Because you do know, you've just told me. So just a very simple thing, acting upon what you know. So acting upon what you know. You don't need to go out, I'm going to become some vast scholar. You don't need to go out, I'm going to start learning uh, Aqidah, um, uh, Tajweed, Quran, Tafsir, Fiqh, Aqidah, in great detail, Hadith and all these things. 
You can just learn the very basics and be successful in this life. The very basics. And Uncle Iqbal regularly says, it's stuck in my mind now, learn the far knowledge. I'm sure we've all heard this. Uncle Iqbal's number one quote, <laughs> learn the far, and it's true. It's, and now I'm starting to say it now as well. So it's very important you actually focus on what you know. And if you don't know, just learn them simple things. It's not hard. Believe me, it's not hard. Someone can sit with you for 15 minutes and go through the furs of salah, furs of fasting, furs of wuzu, and furs of ghusl in 15 minutes. It's, not, it's really not that hard. If, if a person decides afterwards, now I want to know the reasons why, I want to know its application, I want to know its intention, that's all afterwards, inshallah. You can learn all those. But if you keep it simple, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you for that simplicity. It's like, I was going to do another thing on the, on the blackboard, but what we'll say is that, now, I'll say, if a person has one million pound in his bank account, one million pound, what's the card does he pay? And he answers, what, what's, the, what's the percentage of zakat? 2.5. Now if a person has 1,000 pounds in his bank account, what does he pay? Yeah. So now what I'm trying to say to you is, is that if your, if your volume is, you only know the basics, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you like you know all of it. Just imagine. That is the volume. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created this volume for a purpose. Because we don't have, all oh, right, okay, uh, he has a million pound, he pays, I don't know, do the mass, 2,500 two pound, 25 grand on that, on, on his wealth. So a person who doesn't have 25 grand, how is he going to pay? He doesn't have it. So is he exempt from it? No. He still has to pay that 2.5%. Even if he only has 50 pound, he has to pay 2.5% of his wealth. Yes, there are many, many conditions, but we won't go too much into detail, inshallah. So just based upon them two principles, knowledge and worship, hand in hand. You can't just have one or the other. Like you hear many scholars, many people, uh, they, they like knowledge. It's like, for example, now I'm sat here in front of you. I don't know what, whatever you think, but I'm a sinful person anyway. But if you guys might think, oh, he, like, I'm not, by the way, like a pious person, I'm not, okay. Now, if, I, if you see me, now, you, okay, you see, oh, he's, he's in the mosque, he's giving, he's talking, he's doing all this and that. And I'm outside, I might be smoking, I might be talking to girls, what are you going to think? You think, hang on a second, he's telling us, oh, do all this and that. Now, why is he not doing it? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will punish me for the volume of whatever you know. It's exactly the same way. So you know a lot, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you for that. If you know less, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will punish you for that as well. Because sometimes you say, like, okay, I remember, <laughs> this is a funny one. When a person is, when they're young, they say, oh, uh, I didn't know it was haram, so I ate it. For example, it's, it used to happen a lot. Uh, now, some, some people you say, oh, um, I didn't know Harry Bos were haram, for example. So they chomping on Harry Bos for a few hours. They say, oh, I didn't know. Will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punish that person? No. Now, Another example, if a person's last meal, he, he, for survival, he only has something which is haram. Can he eat that meal? Yes, he can eat that meal. So look how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has always subjected everything. Like, yeah, don't, it's not hard. For, it's not really, really, I'm trying to emphasize, it's not hard. That's what I'm trying to, try to, this is my main focus point today, it's not that hard. Sometimes we'll get focused on, oh, you know, I don't know it, that's why I don't do it, you know. But we all know, that we have to pray five times a day. And how much effort have you put into learn? And I just, I just told you, 15 minutes of your, of your uh, inshallah, you all have long lives and you live for uh, as much years as you can. But what I'm trying to say to you is that 15 minutes of your extremely busy life, just sit with Uncle Iqbal, uh, myself, Haji Saab over there, and then they can actually teach you the, what you need to learn. And sometimes, if none of us are here, or Qadir Fakir, he can teach you the, uh, the fars, the uh, of wajibat and sunnahs, etc. He can teach you all this. And inshallah, that's all you have to do in order to establish some relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, I've covered the intention, I've covered the worship, you've told me all your deeds. And now, what, what, what it's saying is that when, for everything you see and hear from the, from the literary workers of the writers, the teachers of the teachers, the, preach the preaching of the preachers, 
and the research of the researchers. Indeed, it was because of them that the books of scripture, Qutb, were revealed and the messengers, uh, the messenger and the Rusul were sent. And yes, indeed, it's because of them that the heavens and the earth were created. Because of the messengers, because of the Prophet wasallam, this whole thing created into existence. Everything we know of is because of the creation of the Prophet wasallam. How many of you knew this? That the Prophet wasallam was the first creation and everything was created from him. That's how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the whole of mankind. Every messenger, every sinner, everything was because of the Prophet ﷺ. And before any human being and before any other soul were created, the Prophet ﷺ spent days, um, years, and uh, thousands and thousands of years doing the tasbih of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We might have all heard this. That's where we get our tasbih and salah. Subhana rabbi al-a'la, subhana rabbi al-azim. And Allahu Akbar and all these different uh, tasbihat that we do is because the Prophet ﷺ was praying this in before even the Alam Irwa was even made. So you can you can imagine how the Prophet ﷺ and his manifestation was too great. They say that if I can remember correctly, is that there's only two places in the whole of existence that can manifest the light of the Prophet ﷺ, and that was their blessed body and their place in Jannah. And the, and the and sorry on this earth is the is the barzak is the is the the place of resting in Madinatul uh, in Madinatul Munawwara in Masjid Nabawi. Only those two places can uh, accept and tolerate that light. And when and the question is is that when is that light, or, or even just to can we can feel and experience that light that prophet that prophetic light. Is that it's only going to come when we make those steps. How many times have we had the hadith of the Prophet, uh, the hadith Qudsi, and uh, take one step to uh, crawl to me and I will run to you? This is just one part of it, but there's full meaning. Take one step to me and I will run to you. Walk to me and I will run to you. There's many different narrations of that style. So yes indeed it's because of them that the heavens and earth were created as well as the creatures they contain. contain. So you must consider two verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's book when considering all of this. He, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying it is Allah who created the seven heavens and the earth they're like. The command comes down between them gradually so that you may know Allah is powerful over all things. And that Allah has, encomp- and Allah has encompassed everything in knowledge. This, so this Quranic verse is ayah is sufficient proof of the nobility of the knowledge, especially the knowledge of the affirmation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the tawheed, the oneness of Allah. We mustn't get confused with this because all messengers and prophets came with one message, tawheed. That was the very first thing they came with the message of tawheed, the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because at that time it was common. There were many gods, many different statues. And how, how it is applicable today? How? What is it? It's not that there's statues we worship. It's not that there's, we've erected some uh, sculpture of wood and we start to worship it. It's not this. This has all been eradicated from Muslims. But what have we made gods? What is it that we made gods? This inside us, ourself, the nafs. Money, health, shaitan, music, uh, drugs, alcohol, all these things have become our God. Because we know that we cannot sacrifice Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know this. But why, why is it the people who have made these things, they're gods, and now we've given it another name. What do they call it? Addiction. They call it addiction. So they, instead of saying that right, his nafs is encompassed by evil and shar, and sharat and whatnot, they will say that he actually has an addiction. And that he has to go to rehab, he has to X, Y, and Z. But there's no the real cure is actually realizing this first. And that Allah is one. Allah say Allah is one. Allah Samad. You read this ayah in your salah, you recite this every day. Every day when a person prays, every salah, it's like we only know that one surah, one surah. Just look at the meaning. And you'll understand what all this is about. Just look at the meaning of that surah. It is only 
the five or six verses. But what you're understanding is that Allah's oneness, you're removing all that. Or when a person says, La ilaha illallah, there is no God except Allah. No, it doesn't mean that there's no other God, so remove all these false deities, all this money, all this everything, health, fame, name, alcohol, money, drugs, all of it should be gone. And Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Muhammad is a messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And what has he come with? The sunnah. And inshallah, I don't like to keep this 20 minutes because sometimes I sit in university and I know that one, two hour lectures, it burns your brain out. So what I, what I like to do is I keep this um, uh, half an hour long, inshallah, and uh, then we will move on to the uh, zikr method, inshallah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Wa nashadu Allah ilaha illa wa atubu ilaika.